Sam Hooley was recently appointed to head up Momentum's contrarian investment team. Contrarian investors do not follow the general market trends and don't follow the crowd. They do almost exactly the opposite to what investors who may be following the general trend do. For more, Sam Hooley, investment strategist at Momentum Asset Management. Thank you so much for your time. It's Sam, I think the last time we chatted, and I was probably the last interview you did, you was about 12 months ago. That's right. And you've obviously taken a little break, uh, 10 months, but I know you've kept the eye on your market. You've been managing your own money. Welcome back to the roller coaster ride. How are you perceiving things out there at the moment? Well, it, it's wonderful to be back first. I think I'm invigorated, fresh. Uh, it, it's, it's been good to observe markets without, without having to, to manage other people's money. Uh, I'm looking forward to the challenge, but I think it's just to step back and look at it. It's been good. And in the last 12 months, it's been, a, it's been an incredible ride because the market is virtually, in the US, it's, it's been flat with great volatility. And in South Africa, it's been slightly up but with great volatility. So I think there have been, there've been some themes I think that have emerged. And the way I see it today, I think we're probably on the cusp of, of some sort of rally on the basis of some of speculation, I'd imagine. So the rally started today. Is that what you're saying? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think that the market has really been going through these bouts of typically called risk on, risk off. But, but investors trying to anticipate policy action. And, and there certainly seems to be some move today where, where there are big foreign buyers in our market. I would say not indiscriminate, but buying across the board. And that must mean that some policy action is coming. Now, I'm not expressing an opinion on that right now, but, but I, think that I, I think that that's what's underlying the, 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 the market. Before you jump in, can I ask one question on policy action? Is there any merit to policy action, if I can be very blunt? No, no, uh, that is the proper question. So, so no, okay. As, as a typical contrarian, I think that in fact, it's pretty clear. The fact that we're here today needing additional policy action is, is, is a clear sign that policy action doesn't change the economy in any way. What it does, it, it provides an environment where yields are low and it forces investors to speculate in, 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 in assets that are, are risk assets and, and, and potentially would give them better returns. But I think it doesn't change the economy whatsoever. And in the long run, it's debatable whether it will fix anything. Ashraf, your turn. Yeah, my You're going to have three questions back to back. <laughs> I'll just keep quiet. Okay, sure. So, I mean, we, we know each other's investment styles sure. quite well. Just one question. I mean, with all this wall of money that's been thrown at the markets, we've had markets running and then coming back, etc. Do you think we've gotten to that point where any marginal money being thrown at the market is just going to have little to no impact? So the next bit of operation twist is just going to fall flat on its face. Okay. Yeah, I think that... It, let's sort of think about wh what those policy actions could be. So in the case of the Fed, it's Operation Twist or some form of quantitative easing, QE. In the case of the ECB, it's another one of the LTROs or, or something to that effect or some sort of injection into banks, be they Spanish or other. On both those cases, you, there is no investment merit in it, but what it could cause is a speculative pent-up demand, as people say, well, for the short period, you know, there's some liquidity and we want to participate. But it appears as though that's running out. And in the case of the Fed, Ashraf, to buy bonds now, any form of buying bonds, is surely a loss-making operation. Because, I mean, I, I would like to see them defend buying bonds now at these rates and, and anticipate making a, a gain. Because you effectively are locking in very low yields. And if you exit, and nobody seems to even think about the exit anymore, Ashraf. It, they, they don't really want to think about it, but you have to. I think it's loss making. So the only benefit from any policy action will be to buy time and cause markets to have a temporary run up. And we've seen it really doesn't help in the long run. So the market would have speculative merit, but I think no investment merit whatsoever. Yeah, but just remember the Fed isn't a fund manager, so their performance doesn't get measured on a, no, a no, quarterly or annual basis, and they'll run those positions till expiry. Um, the other thing is, where would you then see the opportunities in this market right now, given your contrarian view? Because some things are keenly priced. We spoke about platinum earlier. Sure. I feel that those are relatively cheap given where platinum prices are. But where would you see the opportunities? Okay, if you look at the South African equity market, um, I, I would say that as a rule, the, the market probably has gone up slightly, but there have been pockets. The good news is, 
is, is, is that the market shifted a little bit in that the, the big run up has been in, in the industrial space. Now I know that you're talking to an industrial fund manager uh, next. Directly after uh, you. Directly after me, so let me tee it up and, and, and no offense to Theo when he, when he comes up, but I, I would say that, that certain areas of the market I think have run way ahead and certainly when it comes to consumer stocks, anything that's even seen to be a consumer stock, whether it be a Tiger Brands, AVI, Vodacom seen as a consumer play or the retailers, they're trading on very high multiples on phenomenal earnings. And then you have areas like the telecom stocks, like the platinum stocks, that, that have in fact lagged. So they I are would, clearly unloved. Let's well, they're unloved and in true contrarian style, uh, Asha, which shouldn't surprise you, is that I'm saying, well, if you're going to dig, you're going to dig there, any area of the market that's lagged. So, so, so my feeling is that platinum would be a wonderful place to put your money to work. And the problems are very well known, but it would, it would certainly be a favorite sector. And I think there are good ideas there. Today is a nice day, but I think that even if it is a nice day, there's, there's a long way to run because these stocks are incredibly, incredibly oversold. And then furthermore, I think that areas like telcos and individual stocks are shuffled in, in certain niches, you know, because if you look at it, while Vodacom's done well, MTN and Telcom, I think, have done less well. So within a sector, you might say, well, the sector offers individual stocks as opposed to the sector as a whole. I allowed you another question, so go <laughs> ahead. Give me another go question. Go ahead. Sam. How do you feel about Anglo's um, African Rainbow Minerals, both single digit PEs? Okay, the earnings look to be at the peak, but the prices have come off quite a bit in the last two months. Yeah. I think, Ashraf, you, you, you're right. That's an interesting part in our time in our market because, as a rule, I think that this is a, this is a perfect environment for people who are picking stocks. Because while you look at the market as a whole, you always have to look at the composition of the market. Now, Anglo's and Bulletin, being the big stocks, have done really badly. They can be easily explained by commodity prices, but the fact is, if you look at a stock like Anglo's, excluding the listed, the rump is just too cheap. Stocks like Arm and uh, African Rainbow Minerals, once again, it's the same theory. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that these stocks are as cheap as you'd like them to be, but I think that you have to be looking at them. And as an investor, I definitely would not call them an avoid. You know, whereas if you ask me about retailers, Ashraf or Bronwyn, you you will say avoid. Oh well, you know it's not. But then where, they exist where's the anymore. risk filter? So let's go back to telecom. Yesterday, trading around 21 rand. I assume it's there and thereabouts today. What what is the risk filter? Because now, having spoken to a number of contrarian investors, this one should be right on the radar screen. But everybody's saying, hang on a minute, we're not sure, sure. that this is a viable company going forward. Okay, great. So, so the, the first key point on contrarianism, which, which, which obviously rolls off the tongue quite nicely. In fact, there's so many contrarians that it's, it's probably not a correct statement. How can everybody be contrarian? So the key thing when it comes to a stock like Telcom and MTN to a lesser extent is that, that just because a stock's out of favor doesn't necessarily mean there's value there. So, so what you want to do is you want to think about Telcom and say, well, Telcom has two things that has hit it. The first is, an obvious means of extracting value, monetizing a value of an asset or, or, or a part of the business has fallen away. And investors are rightly saying, well, if it's fallen away once, what is the likelihood that we'll ever be able to monetize that? That's a valid point. The next point is the earnings themselves have been disappointing. So, so when you do that, you still have to do your homework. But it's unloved, it's fallen a lot, and it's on a multiple that I think is incredibly low on earnings that you can't say are very high. If you're, if you're an equity investor and you have to be fully invested, well, clearly you want to favor that stock. And the argument then is, is the stock going to zero? And I mean, it's very hard for you to argue that these assets are not worth something, that the network is not worth something. They might not be able to monetize it, but the stock has a natural flaw. The problem then is timing when all of the sellers that I think are just saying, well, let's, let's wait and see, get out. So my feeling is Telcom is a perfect example of the sort of stock that you should be looking at without me being forced to make a recommendation at this point. <laughs> Ashraf, yeah, absolutely, we're going to give you some time. How do you feel about that, that thesis, so, so to speak? Look, I, I've, I've, Sam and I have worked together in the past and I understand where he comes from. It's one of those views where for two years it may look as though he's wrong and then suddenly over a six month period he gets a 60% return. So it requires, a, it requires patience 
and uh, a patient view. I watched you on Monday night when you were doing the Q&A on, on Telcom. And one of the comments was that, um, you know, if you just looked at the fiber optics, it's worth more than where the to, share to price set was. Up, I think the, the stat was, or, or the number thrown around, to set up the infrastructure that Telcom has. 60 billion? Would yeah, that be a, a fair yeah, that sounds figure? Yeah, right. So uh, comparatively, then we're right with you on this absolutely. one. No, absolutely. The upside is, the upside is there. There's, there's very limited downside because, you know, the prices are regulated for Telcom. So, and people still use telephones. And, you know, no matter who has come into the market, um, I remember listening four years ago that MTN was putting in its own network for Santon and it would take away a lot of traffic from Telcom. Well, reality is I haven't seen that big move yeah. away from telecom. I, I one final point, if I may. I think that what happens is it's amazing how, how the market has a short memory. And, and, and if you think of stocks like telecom and even MTN, MTN bought a trading update just a, it's a while back. But the news headlines are, are such that it's such a great controversy that, that potentially people just want to wait. When in actual fact, the trading statement in the case of MTN was so good you know, there's a, there's a higher dividend payout ratio, there's a great balance sheet. All of these things for the moment are forgotten. So in the case of Telcom, a lot of these things were things that people were willing to price in not so long ago. But the headlines have effectively scared them. And, you know, as a contrarian, you say, well, if you prepare to wait, well, you can wait. Because in the long run, hopefully the value will come out and you can be patient. Sam, we, we're out of time, but it is good to have you back and I look forward to many more robust discussions with you here you so on Investment 360.